Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And that's it. <laughs> Just us. It's, <laughs> it's a great show. Yeah. Um, as always, this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Uh, we are going to kind of go all over the place tonight. Um, still socially distanced. Ross is still in the Northeast. I'm still in the Midwest. Um, where do you want to start? It's snowing. Well, not here, but very close here. It's snowing. It snowed here last night. Oh, so. did it really? Yeah, it oh, did. We, okay. We now it's the perfect <laughs> early snow because it snowed. Trees look pretty. Yard looked pretty. Mm. Actually, it was the kind of snow that was heavy and wet, and there were still enough leaves and, and branches on the trees that, like, underneath the trees, oh. there was nothing. Death and snow, so, like, as they say. Yeah. What was it? M- death snow. It's like maximum slippery. Yeah. Because Except- leaves and every roadway was completely clear because they were so warm mm. so we didn't have i didn't have to shovel anything that's why i was like it's the best snow ever <laughs> so it, it's the kind of snow that would have been super pretty if it was like thanksgiving yeah which but is because it's literally only a week ten away days away yeah okay not even um, uh yeah no uh yeah so uh, lots of places go it's been a long time since we did a a show just the two of us and and we'll take happily the uh the mojo from tst and do crew show yeah. i like i like running with that um i think we should start with uh since you're talking about snow i think we should start with visibility yeah. With visibility, yes. Excellent segue. Can, as you can tell, we've been doing this for a little while. So Light Force was extremely kind and sent over some Genesis LED lights to put on the Project GX460. And after much fiasco, they have finally been wired thanks to the custom shop down in Queens. And uh, needless to say, the Visibility that these lights provide is nothing short of the difference between daytime and nighttime. And uh, and with the lights on, it is daytime. So, so Chris, what is, you're seeing right now are just the GX's headlights. Just the low beams, which in all fairness are pitched a little bit high because it's lifted and I, I have not adjusted the low beams and much to any oncoming traffic this may. Um, that is on the list of things to do in the coming weeks, but <laughs> and now you can see what happens. So for the audio the, listener, uh, like half the of the forces. image was illuminated in white light for the low beams, and when yeah. you turn his light forces on, literally you can see everything down the road. It is remarkable. It is a full football's field worth of like full visibility. It goes and so far. It's incredible. Um, and you know, I, I threw hella 500s on the front of the truck when we did the bumper, the, the Iron Man lift and the Iron Man bumper, like a set of hella 500s are like the standard. They are the go-to cheap auxiliary lights. Um, you can get them on Amazon for like 75 bucks, um, which I did. And I got them on sale for like 50 bucks. So, you know, the light forces aren't cheap. Um, the kit is about a thousand bucks for the two of them with the wiring and whatnot, but it is like the thing, the catch is that visibility, whether it is back roads and there's on, you know, like questionable conditions or you're off-roading at night, they're like, you can't get around the fact that visibility is paramount to safety. Um, and the light forces are just like phenomenal. It is, I, I have, yeah, I've run so many different auxiliary lights over the dozens of vehicles I've owned. Um, and you know, our Australian friends always talk about light forces and you always hear about people here running light forces and, uh, and everybody's seen pictures of them because they are unmistakable and uh on the front of the lexus it is just it's a game changer it's a total game changer i i love them i can't say enough good about them um well i I like that they're yellow like well they have a yellow filter so they send them over with a clear lens with a clear filter um or clear you know clip on lens i put the yellow lens which they also thankfully for my sake sent over um I, I put those on because they're better for like 
fog, dust, and inclement yeah. weather, which realistically is the instances in which it's most vital to have improved visibility. Um, so yeah, I man, I just like did I share the snow picture on the last show? I don't uh, my I don't driving know. snow picture. I I don't know if you did. Okay, I'm trying to get it to load real was, fast. Was who was that? Was that Mac? Was that that was Mac? Show? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Mac's not somebody who's new to needing visibility. So. Right, and so like this was so this was in the van. Yes, but this was just standard headlights, and like I would have loved some yellow light to be able to mm-hmm. throw through the snow there. Mm-hmm. Um. Yep. This is my my son taking the picture over my shoulder while I was driving. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't take this picture magically from the back seat, guys. <laughs> I'm not no, that but good. It, like good visibility is something you totally take for granted. And as somebody who again has run many many different auxiliary lights, like what these lights do in comparison to what everybody over the last. 10 years has said they do is like man the hype is worth it you know it's real is what you're saying (laughs) the the hype is real yeah the hype is real and i'm not just saying this as like some bullshitter who's trying to like say yes thank you light force i appreciate you sending it over like it it, it's it's real the lights are amazing um and you'd have to spend twice as much to get something as good so nice yeah. Approved. So what happens when you get out of the truck and you can't see? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> more <laughs> more unintentionally shameless plugs. Uh we I think we talked about this on the last show. You did briefly um, you did briefly talk about it. Yeah, so so I had been working with Pelican for some stories for UTV driver. They sent me a cooler and a cargo box uh which I'm using for like tool storage and and the cooler for beer storage. Um you know, the, the basically what they're trying to do with the coolers is compete with Yeti. And, you know, Pelican is like the go-to name for what everybody uses for like transporting their cameras and camera gear when they have to fly. So they're expanding, they're trying to broaden their scope um, and they're getting into like the tactical flashlight and lighting scene. And they sent me a flashlight and I think the, I think it's the 8060, which may or may not be in production um i i've had okay. difficulty actually finding if it's still available or not but it's an led flashlight it's like mag light size and it's an led it's a rechargeable led flashlight which Ooh. is really the crucial aspect because my mag light my led mag light likes to go through many 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 batteries um and the pelican is just you know you pop it on as a re- uh, recharging apparatus and it and it is it's like the light force equivalent so this is so the picture here is my backyard that's the corner of my backyard where oh, my you got leaves, leaves you gotta get rid where of my leaves <laughs> like to collect and uh and we have severe light pollution because you know city and the next picture is what happens when the flashlight is on and it is daytime um like really truly like it's a lot of light when, from the, yeah, the size of flashlight you showed us last time. Man. Like it's, it's like what, eight to ten inches long. It's probably about ten inches. Yeah, yeah. probably thereabouts. It it's it's phenomenal. Um, and it's rechargeable. And it's rechargeable, and it's it's yeah. I mean, flat. You know, everybody in the off road world likes flashlights, and and you know there was a <laughs> long period of time when like having a mag light mount, you know, underneath this like. Yeah. Along the front portion of your Tacoma seat was like the coolest thing ever. And like finding a, a flashlight mount on Amazon is like the biggest thing, you know, and everybody raves over that. But like having a flashlight that's actually usable is invaluable. Um, and well, the rechargeable element of it makes it kind of a bit of a, of a difference maker there. Yeah. You know, and like I have a a 110 plug in the back of the Lexus. So I can theoretically just mount up some kind of thing and just plug the flashlight into that. So it charges every time I drive the truck, you know? Um, But, you know, it's like meaty and nice and slightly more complicated than I would 
say ideal in terms of changing which lighting output it delivers because currently can only figure out whether it's like you know full kill or strobe light full kill um, <laughs> you used to be able to do like like uh medium or low light and now i can only get it to do the two of what i just mentioned but yeah no it's i mean you know like there's certain companies out there where you expect a level of quality and pelican is like one of those and you know the flashlight is there so it's fantastic i like it it's it's good for uh for poking around outside when you think there's coyotes (laughs) or stray dogs or cows which uh is that an issue in Stanford? No, in, in New Hampshire is that. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> you 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 got the flashlight going for, you know, scoping out whether there's coyotes in the yard of the place you're staying, the Airbnb that you're living in, or uh, yeah, or whatnot, and you find out that there's cows, which are probably why there are also coyotes. It made me it made me think of a uh, my son uh, sent me an Instagram reel the other day, and it was like a guy walking with his dog in the woods, and his, and he thought his dog was like walking up to a bear. And and it's this dark shape in the distance gets up and moves. It is the biggest. Oh my god! Wolf. I saw that. Right, that thing was enormous. Dude, that thing was the size of a horse. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, a dire that, wolf. Like it's I a thing of on, mythology. <laughs> I saw that on Reddit, and most of the comments were like, "Is this? There's no way this is real." And right, it, there's something going on there. Like, it could be perspective, or like you know, the guy's dog's an actual puppy, and no one knows. <laughs> like. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I know that was terrifying. Yeah, that thing, giant dog. So, oh man. Um, do you want to talk about press vehicles? Where do you want to go next? Yeah, let's 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 run through the the press cars. Um, because it's crucial. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna literally read the list first, and then you, you can tell me based on the list exactly what you want to talk about. Um, um, let's I just start F-150 Lightning. I just want to know. Okay, just F-150. That one... All right. So the F-150 Lightning. So I had. A very very blue F one fifty lighting that I yeah, spent a week I spent a week with. Um, I loaded a quad into the bed, which is, as far as I can tell, probably the first ATV that's been loaded into the bed, um, at least on the press side of things. Um, drove it as if it was daily and whatnot, and and you know use it with a car seat, you know, with baby in the back. Um, it's it's good. It's it's really good. It. Uh, it drives like a normal truck. It functions like a normal truck. It's got a bed like a normal truck. Um, it, it, I'd say it even goes further than that because it's got, you know, the frunk and it's got the charging, the 120, um, 110? One, yeah, 110 up front. 110, 220. Is 110 and 220 right? under the frunk. Um, and it's got a 110 in the cabin and it's got both of them out back. Um, it could not have cared less that I had a thousand pounds of players in the bed. Really? Uh, yeah. So you actually is, drove it around with the quad in the back for a little bit. I actually, not, I returned the players <laughs> with this. And yeah, yeah. I used the lightning to return the players. Um, and it didn't care, which is a lot more than I can say about a lot of the other vehicles that I have loaded the players into the back of. Um, the charging infrastructure remains a question. The only place, and to reiterate, I live in a city. The only place that I had in my available to me to, to recharge the vehicle was an Electrify America place. Um, yeah. And I only used about half of the truck's charge, so I didn't recharge it um, because baby got sick and you know i you don't didn't... set an electrical charger with a sick kid what are yeah, you doing yeah no i i didn't feel like just plugging it into my house um so no i mean it it is a very good vehicle you know you can nip it like the thing is it's an ev and it's a pickup and the two of those when you add them together there are compromises you know the added weight compromises the ride quality there's no way around it you know it compromises the braking compromises the way the thing comes to a rest 
with a thousand pounds in the back after you stop you know it, like there's this little like rock back and forth shimmy kind of thing um but it has amazing tech like it has onboard scales it has like all these things you would never even think of you know <laughs> you just have to know how to work them like I, yeah. I i tried to operate the onboard scales with the quad in the bed and realized that only way you can operate the onboard scales to which calculates how much mass you have in the vehicle versus the payload is if you push the button prior and then after <laughs> <laughs> which you know is my hey, you fault. had to learn <laughs> yeah it's my it's my own fault so no the, the lightning's good um i'm very excited to see what comes next you know yeah. whether that's a ranger ev or a, a maverick ev um we know there's a Silverado and a and a GMC Sierra EV coming. Um, there's a Ram Revolu- Revolution. Is that what they're? Yeah, calling it's it? like the. It is. It is yeah. Ram Revolution or something. But every it's... fucking EV has to have a pun in its. What name. was the? There's oh one that's my. not going to be able to do it, and I I couldn't remember which one. <laughs> not gonna be able to do what the pun oh the or... suburban if they ever yeah if they do the suburban <laughs> ev they there's no e in suburban no. so suburb in even, <laughs> even suburb uh, even so no the lighting is good i think everybody that buys one will be satisfied with it so long as they can actually maximize its charging ability it's good you know, it's, a, it's really good for a first go. I'm glad they exist. I haven't, <clears throat> I haven't, I've, I've been around them. I haven't driven one, obviously. Um, I really like the the hybrid version. Like, I don't know why we need yeah, to go. Yeah, the power boost. Yeah, the power yeah. boost, the hybrid version. Like, but I can't get it with six seats. Like, I just need to put a front row bench in it and yeah. I would. Yeah, but you're daily talking. Daily the crap out of it reminiscence here you know it's only a matter of time before there's a power boost excursion and an, an excursion ev you mean expedition they don't make the excursions anymore Exp- yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah i wish they still made the excursion <laughs> that that's what that's what i meant yeah so yeah no, it's good week um on the extremely inefficient alternative side of things the escalate v is the greatest thing ever no it's not um, it is <laughs> it is as silly as silly gets. It's all kinds of dumb. It's all kinds of dumb. It's the supercharged V8 that is your children. Yeah, it's the updated picture. <laughs> they fit in, they they do fit in the Escalade V. They do. Um, <laughs> and but they I won't assure, they'll I be in there for a long time, but we're not going very far with it. Averaged uh, eight point eight with it. Yeah. And uh and I think with your kids in it, I'd probably average eight point seven. So it just it doesn't care about anything. It is spectacular. It makes the best sounds of anything. Um, it's a hundred and fifty something grand for what you know. Yeah, man. Okay. It's, it's the Blackwing CT five V Blackwing engine. I and remember when we had it's... Bowman and Kevin on, and they talked about how they love driving the Escalade. And that one was 109, I believe. That was a yes. This is the second Escalade I've had this year, and and, and both of them have not been inexpensive. Oh my gosh! But this one, I mean, this one's like if you want a black a CT5e Blackwing, but you want four wheel drive and high seating position, and. We had Johnny on a few weeks ago, right? And he said it. He said that this is the loudest, most obnoxious vehicle on sale, and like, I mean, short of boutique, you know, like yeah. niche manufacturers. Like, I don't know how loud a a, a Z- whatever the newest Pagani is would be. Um, yeah, I don't know, but either. I I have never personally experienced a factory vehicle that startup is louder than this it's so loud um like 
The only thing that I've started, and I've had a Corvette Grand Sport with a Corsa exhaust. I've had a Challenger with a straight pipe. Um, I've, you know, tested multiple press cars that should be louder. Right. And this thing was so loud that I actually felt bad starting it in my neighborhood. I feel like uh, the, the engineers are like, nah, it doesn't matter. It's the last exhaust we're ever going to design. So just like do whatever the hell we want. Like The engineers and the people on board on development were like, fuck it all. This is, <laughs> we have, like, dude, that, the Jag F-Pace SVR was yeah. half as loud as this. Okay obnoxious but also like it drove great and like we had when robbie was on we were like he said something about the escalade you know driving smaller and better than it has any right to and like it doesn't shrink around you or any of that trope bullshit that people say you know when they're driving hellcats but like drives really good nice just have to uh you know have offshore accounts to uh afford fueling it um is there anything on our time i i don't know that there's anything on the list here that i'm actually interested in other Uh, than obviously you drove a brz limited the brz was great it is i don't know that we've discussed that you drove that so so they gave me brz it was silver with stick um feels like ancient history because this was when did when did i august this so this 12 was, weeks ago so three months oh ago my God. so yeah so this was only my daughter was very young when when this arrived um so i you know i've owned miatas and i've driven brz's and frs's and 86s and everything um and I had like, as somebody who grew up in Subaru fandom, and as somebody who also has a fascination with going sideways and with like the interactions you have with the vehicle, which is kind of redundant saying that I've owned Miatas. Um, right. I had like pretty high expectations for the BRZ. Um, and it's really, really, really good. Um, dude, I love the crap out of the one I was in, man. It is like, this is what the first one should have been. And I know that's so easy to say because I'm on the backside of things, you know, like I'm not involved in development or, or anything having to do with manufacturing of these cars, but it is like, it's just one of those cars that you're not going fast. You know, you're not going fast. It doesn't matter that you're not going fast, but you can manipulate it in a way that always is like entertain. It's just, yeah. You go around a corner at 30 miles per hour when there's a sign that says like, caution, don't go over 30. And you're like, Oh my God, I was fucking flying. And it's just, (laughs) it's just, it's, it's just good. Like the seats are good. The shifter is 95% of the way to where it needs to be to be perfect. Like the Civic SI shifter is better. There's no, I won't contest that. And I don't doubt that the type R shifter is even better. Um, but like, it, man, if you isolate any of the things that journalists harbor over out it's not good which is kind of fucked up like the steering is like a little too light the shifter is a little too soft and not like direct enough as people would say you know like it's mathematically kind of slow um it should get better gas mileage for the weight and the power um it's sprung a little too soft in my opinion you know and compared to a miata like it's it's sprung like a freaking race car because miatas lean over on their bump stops <laughs> like like you know like it's a freaking 70s like 
passenger sedan, but it's just the BRZ is just one of those cars that with all of the things that come together, it's just super cohesive and it's just, it's just fun. It's just like, I, I, I love the crap a, out of the time I spent in one and it was, it was the only, so I, the only time I was around one was at Road America, the mm-hmm. only vehicle I took multiple laps in. Yeah. The fuck I drove a thing. Lexus. I drove a Supra. I drove both Supras that were there, the four and the six. The BRZ is the only oh, yeah. one I went back to. Oh no 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 no! It it it's more car than the Supra will ever be at at a, a half or a third of the price. But the fucked up thing is that dealers are charging ten over for the BRZ and the eighty six, and that much money gets you a Mustang GT or you know an SS with if you potentially can... a one LE. Package. Find one of those that also isn't being charged <laughs> over. <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 no, but I know for a fact you can place factory order and get those cars at sticker. Yeah, and like that is, those cars are twice the horse. They're literally twice the horsepower. You know, talk. And it's fantastic. And regardless, like people wax up and down about like how the enthusiast car is dead, but like the BRZ when in twenty years. People are going to look back on this BRZ the same way people look back on the AE86, you know? So it's yep. good. It's really good. Um, I'm going to skip my updates, actually. I'm going to hold off on them. I don't want to talk about them. Okay. Because I'm don't. i not, I yeah, I, I just need to be more focused on them before. It'd just be a general discussion of, like, literally way too much. Like, I'd rather be a little more focused on them before we talk about it. So you're in a, you're um, in a bit of a... Uh, transitory period so yeah well transitory transition I transition know, i don't want it's more of a, mm. it's more of a transition but um I made up by my tongue before i say something <laughs> yeah but i did pull up stuff from sema which i'm <laughs> I always see people like, oh, I'm so excited to go. And all I can think about is like the 13 miles I walked in one day at SEMA. Like, I don't ever, like, I'm sure it's fun to see people like it. It would have been great to see people. But like, that is such an epic day of just like Mm -hmm. wandering constantly. But speaking of Ford Lightning, I don't know if you saw this coming out of SEMA. I didn't. But what the fuck am I looking at? So you're looking at a Ford Lightning that's been dropped. Um, obviously, this is little... the most Photoshop of Photoshop looking Photoshops. Yeah, but I love the body color match Thule on top. I do too, but I don't like the quad seating pseudo Recaros. Yeah, that's weird. But then check Ooh, out the weird. the bed Thule as well, which I'm assuming this is the tent. That's the cargo carrier. Who's product is this because this is i don't remember um all right for the listener uh ford lightning obviously electric drops on presumably 22s or bigger possibly 24s that match the rooftop tooly and it is with a cream it's a green truck with cream wheels and a cream Tooling on top. <laughs> it's Toyota's army green mashed with a cream wheel and cream tooling. It's it's not bad. The more I like it, I like it. It's a, a a way I personally and there's a lightning. So the grill obviously has a lightning trim. Yeah, it's not blank. <laughs> and then it, it just says lightning across the front in enlightened. LED oh, style yeah, let, letters it's popping off. 150 grand that I wouldn't spend <laughs> doing this. All right. Well, maybe this one's more your style. It is. So for the listener, this is the uh Nissan. God, I can't even remember what number truck. It's technically a Datsun. Yes. But it's think- definitely a heritage truck, like it's not Early a five, 70s. Is it a 510? I don't know. If it's no, it's not a 510. Um, they, they chopped and put a bed on the back. It's actually the it's truck. It's long before mini trucks were even a thing. Yeah, but it's, but it's on got like, turbo fans. It's got turbo fans. <laughs> um, it's got the hood mounted fender mirrors. Um, white 
with red accents. It's the way trucks should be. It's the appropriate the size too. Small, small truck space. Yeah. Although Fender those flares. are very, very large wheels. Yeah. It's uh it would be the perfect extra if extras were a thing in Jim Kana. Hmm, yeah. Also, it doesn't not look like the rotary Mazda's trucks. What? You know, Mazda made those rotary trucks. It kind of looks like that. Like a little bit. They don't not look like each other. <laughs> and this is the proper use of uh, possibly double negative. Yes. All right. Our All right. SEMA saga continues. With. This one, this one at least is something we can talk about. So. This is, a, yeah, no, this is actually like we were joking about premonitions before, but like this is an actual premonition for what you will be able to walk into the dealer and buy probably in 18 ish months. Pretty soon. I, you think I'm wrong about that? No, I, I think it, yeah, a year? I think it'll be real. I think a year is probably too, too close, but I think two years is, I think their marketing team and their, Development teams are probably lighting fires under people's asses to get this out sooner. Yeah. So this is the Toyota Tundra Trail Hunter uh, is the the concept name. Trail Hunter being the moniker that they're planning to use for their entire line of above TRD Pro. They're going to charge us even more? Rotors, I don't know. So, the thing, the catch here is they haven't actually said what Trail Hunter is going to be. They've just announced that there's going to be a line of Toyota vehicles called Trail Hunter, which is a good name. Um, a little campy considering Honda just announced Trail Sport, <laughs> but like a, tra a Trail Hunter is an actually like that's an actual good name. Um, and if it's, you know, like God next year is the 20th anniversary of the Rubicon name and Jeep has sold probably hundreds of thousands of vehicle base just on the, on the fact alone that the Rubicon name has drawn people into the dealership. I so, feel like I feel like you're low with your number there. <laughs> you think Rubicon's actually drawn more? I, I think they're more, right? I think they're sold millions <laughs> of those things. So <laughs> I, I I wouldn't be surprised if it was a couple of hundred thousand vehicles, um, not just Wrangler Rubicons, but like that they've actually like you know the Halo vehicle aspect has brought people into the dealership because they go, oh, I'm going to buy a Rubicon, and they get right. in there and they go, oh, actually, I'm going to buy a Cherokee, ha ha ha, you know. So yeah, so tr the. TRD Pro has been a long, like, winding road for Toyota. Um, and it its connotation kind of varies based on Tundra to Tacoma to Forerunner. Um, and then they have, like, you know, TRD Adventure and TRD whatnot for RAV4. So yeah. Trail Hunter, if they, like, this is a concept they've accepted that this is a concept because it's got like this kooky rooftop tent thing going on. Yep. Um, but if they go big and do like front and rear lockers and like a little bit of underbody protection, I think trail hunter could actually like be a thing, you know, there's like, a lot of space in those wheel wells. There's a lot of space in those wheel wells, but like, Flex is a thing, and right? Flex again, is a again, thing, or or bigger tires. Dude, like they're playing is, in my head. <laughs> yeah, but like this is also this is them saying we have a name. We are displaying a concept for this name. Yeah, we know for a fact that there's a new Forerunner in the next year to two years. Um, With there's probably the, a Tacoma to follow. There will be a Tacoma to follow, and there will also be a Tacoma EV to follow. You know, and there's a new Lexus GX coming. So if there's a a Tundra Trail Hunter that 
goes along with this. Like they have their own Rubicon on their hands if if they really nail things down the right way with what this needs to be. And and you know, my somewhat educated opinion is rear locker, front locker, possibly electronically disconnectable front sway bars, some kind of underbody protection, and some kind of badging and or decal kit that makes this something more than just a TRD Pro. Yeah. You know? I like so, the uh, I like the rock sliders it had on it. I thought those were good. Yeah, I mean, if you buy a Wrangler or a Gladiator Rubicon, it has factory sliders, you yep. know? Like, Toyota's theoretically just taking hints. But, so, I don't know. Dude, la- uh, what'd you get? I was going to say, a Forerunner Trail Hunter with sliders, front and rear lockers. They'll sell like, all of them. Like electronically those. disconnect those. <laughs> way if it's 65 grand, They'll sell all of them. It doesn't I, like. I think if it's higher, they'll still sell all of them. Three ninety twos are how how expensive in like the seventies. Three ninety twos. Oh yeah, you can't buy one for less than seventy. Yeah, you're talking about ninety for one with good options. But like, the thing is that most TRD Pro Four Runners are also selling for way over MSRP. Right. You know, and that truck has been around since two thousand. Did you know that there was actually, you know, the sole engine option for the forerunner for the fifth gen forerunner the four liter v6 four liter v6 compared to the five speed automatic yeah did you know that in 2010 and early in 2011 there was a four cylinder fifth gen forerunner no there was <laughs> and nobody wanted it <laughs> they sold about 50 of them yeah, no. yeah i think i i do i think the total production numbers were like close to 200 but there was in fact a four cylinder fifth gen forerunner for a while it messed with me that i didn't realize you could get a forerunner in rear wheel drive oh yeah you can still yeah yeah sport like rear it's drive, literally called four runner yep. <laughs> you can get a sport nightshade i think at one point you could actually get like a trd rear wheel drive but yeah no there was sr5 rear wheel drives yeah yeah yep there's sweet super the small last culture of hovering forerunners yeah. last one i got is just one of pure insanity so gremlin i was expecting the xo no sequoia <laughs> uh, I, I didn't go with things that were normal Plus, we're, we're we're hoping Kurt comes on the show soon, so I don't I don't want to take that off. I want to talk about fair that with him. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about somebody fair who's actually got knowledge of it. Yep, this thing enough. just is insane to me of a gremlin on tracks, and I kind of like it. <laughs> so somebody posed a question recently um, about snowmobile trails. And if you have a vehicle that's on tracks, can you drive on snowmobile trails? Snowmobile trails. Like, what if you? What if, if you have narrow a bar enough side by side, or a a gremlin, and you put it on tracks? <laughs> can you snowmobile trails legally? Um, the most offensive thing about the vehicle we're looking at, which for the listener is a red gremlin with a roof rack, and I think those are actually. Air horns on the roof. Not yeah, I was to say there's like seven yep. air horns up top. Yep, they are they are train horns, not not lights. And the front but, bumper looks like it came off a Wrangler. That's what I was going to say. It's a stinger. It's a yeah. probably eighteen to twenty four inch stinger bumper perched off the front. So the only thing I can guess is they're hoping they run into some kind of wildlife. I don't know. I just thought it was fun to look at. <laughs> what the fuck does it say across the front of this thing? Just above the grill. Quake. Quake. It looks like Quake LED. Quake LED? Yeah. I don't see any LED lights on this thing other than what's just below the roof rack, which is just below the 100 million decibels of air horns. 
Well, there's, there's looks like there's one off either side of the roof rack as well. Um, oh, top. good. Oh, so, okay. And then it looks like it's got rear, like those marine speakers on the back. Of it. it does, in fact, have boat speakers. Yeah. It's just a, this is my also, favorite part of SEMA because you're like, what the fuck is going on? But at the same time, <laughs> somebody went, I've got vision. Yeah, it's it's backed up against uh, a Ford F something that has a, a sticker on it that's just coming in hot. And it's parked alongside what it's looks like a trophy like, truck. Yeah, it's trophy. <laughs> it, it's something that would race in the mid 400. It's on bid locks and it's got net on the driver's window. Yeah. So. Yeah, all the stuff is just parked outside at SEMA. It's fantastic. Dave something. I can't read that. Looks like Mason Jr. Dave so, Mason Jr. Yep. Dave, hit us this up is, if you want to talk about your truck. This is, yeah. <laughs> this is your sole SEMA Pinto here. Uh, but so, yeah, was, uh, there, were, there were other SEMA things that we'll potentially touch on. But God, every year leading up to SEMA, I think to myself, God. I wish I was going to SEMA and then SEMA comes and I look at pictures and I look at videos and I go, shit, I am so glad I didn't go to SEMA. Yeah. (laughs) It's been a long time since I Uh, regretted not going to SEMA. Um, I just realized that my, Oh, it's, it's just so. Well, you could, you could find $500 million worth of unnecessary shit you could do to your suburban. Right, but that's it's not even what it it's not even what it is. Like it's just it it's like a weird look what I can do show. But half the time Oh, I don't want to say one upsmanship is not the right phrase, and I'm I'm weary of using a phrase that I would otherwise like a measuring contest, but it is it is a um a Richards. phallic measuring contest. <laughs> yes. It is a sausage measuring contest. Or a, so a... I'm gonna I'm gonna pivot us again with that metaphor <laughs> into a different factory prep vehicle. Okay. Couple of them. First one being the Porsche. Oh yes. All right. So They've been talking about this for a long time. And uh and since before Matt Farah had a came in on a boat that sank. Yes. Or since, boxer on a boat that sank, sorry. Since probably before Matt Farah had a Viking built Safari 911, um they've been discussing doing a, a, a Safari, quote unquote, Safari 911, something on what is a quote unquote lifted suspension. Um for longer travel and they're up there <laughs> better ground clearance and comfort over the utter shit roads that are most of the world's um but yeah the, i mean i think the idea is that porsche has been looking back to their like rothman's rally cars and also looking to the current market and say and and realizing that like Lee Keen is, you know, and all <laughs> the other money, <laughs> all the other companies that are, you know, selling these rally or safari Porsches are 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 effective. Yeah, like you said, printing money. Um, and rally is hot, and off road is hot, and overlanding is hot, and that dude that put the RTT on the, you know, yeah. N- was it a nine 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 six nine nine six? Like, yeah. like they're missing out on a demographic that they would otherwise make a ton of money on, and it's not like they have to crash test a new nine eleven if they lift it. You know, um, Dude, I love the Rothmans car. Sorry, <laughs> no, no. I mean, the in terms of like Porsche, like hierarchy the Rothman's cars and probably in the top five so well and then you have... get so you not only do you have like what were they nine six fours then it, you had Rothman nine five nines like yeah the Rothman nine five nine is like easy top five Porsches of all time with up there with like you know 
I wish my computer would get gonna, so much I'm faster gonna fuck so up. I could share pictures. I'm going <laughs> to fuck up the nomenclature of these things so bad I'm not even going to say them. Um, but like the 70s, 80s race cars, you know, the car Seinfeld owns. I'll leave it the, at that. The, the 917s? The Le Mans cars? Yeah, 917K and 917 Nine. something so is, else. I think this one's 964 based. I believe that's <clears throat> Walter Roll. That is Walter Roll. Um, I don't know if that's 964 based. I think it is. It looks like a singer, oh, but it's God. lifted. Is it 964 or 993? I am. It's not nine nine three. It's not. Yeah, I'm. I'm struggling with my portion. <laughs> We're getting very specific. Oh tonight. God, somebody's gonna punch me in the face here. So, anyway, so especially because <laughs> our powers combined, we can't buy one. So, <laughs> I mean, we we could we could buy one. It's not something that I'll be driving anytime in our lifetime. It, but it, it um, we like five years ago we could have afforded a nine nine six, but even those prices have gone up now. We should have. We 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 should have we should have bought a nine 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 three or nine six four or something. So, right. anyways. Porsche has decided and realized that there's a huge market for this. Um, and also that thanks to people like, you know, prior guest Matt Farah, um, you don't have to sacrifice the dynamics of a 911 and the fun factor of those cars to have what is both better off-road capability and also as it turns out, better U.S. city street comfort. <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, and they've uh, they've been testing these things too. Like they've been putting them. Oh yeah, through the ringer. But like the fucked up thing is that the road that you can see here, realistically at speed, isn't going to feel that different from like downtown New York City or Chicago or LA. <laughs> um, you know, and you haven't, Porsche, you haven't met Missouri roads yet. They're awful too. Man, the like the infrastructure and 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 local road quality has not kept up with the increase in traffic. And that's something we should probably have a show on. And um speaking of TST, we should try to contact some of their prior guests to see if they'll do a show. Like Sleeka was one of the best shows I've listened to in a long time. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, Porsche has realized that suspension travel is a good thing. Yeah, you know? well, it's not just Porsche. It's not just Porsche. It's we're also... We're getting a Lambo, too. It's it's Lamborghini, <laughs> and, uh, and you, you corrected my friends. It's Dirato. Um, <laughs> and there, there will be... Uh, a Porsche counterpart in the Huracan Terato. Terato? I feel like I'm overpronunciating it and botching it in the process. I said um, Serato earlier, and you were like, what? "I said, <laughs> I said Serato." So, right, fuck me, you know. But uh, I'm not gonna roll the R. <laughs> yeah, no, um, no, but it, like, you know, we're seeing the homologation cars, like in the GR Yaris and the GR Corolla. And we're getting kind of the short end of the stick on those because ultimately rally cars are meant to go over rough surfaces very fast. We're getting cars that are going, that are good at going over good surfaces very fast, but they're kind of shit at going over rough surfaces. You know, the production cars, whether it's Type R or the GR Corolla. Um, So... As it turns out, to get something so the, that's good at doing everything, you're gonna have to spend a lot of money. The one the photo I shared was the the spy shot of it testing. This is what they're talking about production looking like. That is it is a sinister hurricane. It looks like the uh what's the most the current one? Not the trofeo. Um it, it's the uh, it's hurricane based. Oh the, yeah. Um, the one that everybody was reviewing. Technica. Like, Technica. So take a Technica. Lifted about an inch and a half to two inches. Uh, roof scoop, roof rails, which are hilarious. Hilarious, and they're explicitly <laughs> for the fact that they want marketing to ultimately put a rooftop tent on there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, two uh, probably six-inch LED lights across the front. Um, so if 
if you are planning to purchase one of these, Chaos. I highly suggest contacting Go Fast Campers. You want a <laughs> rooftop tent that is low profile, oh. that is actually made really well. Please give Graham and those guys a call. Uh, I, plus, I want to see a platform on one of these. <laughs> the problem is those roof rails look so severely like that doesn't look flat at all. To me. No, they they have a curve to them as well. So. But. Yeah, I don't know, man. We're about to enter the freaking wild west of uh, of factory built, you know, rally cars. And I, I really hope, like, there's always this thing about Formula One having a trickle down effect. And yeah, there is a genuine trickle down, like hybrids, you. you know, and aerodynamics does genuinely impact what we see in road cars ten years later. So, so real, real fast before we it, move on, man, if this makes it, if these kind of things make it their way down to like, like, do you remember the, like the Volkswagen Beetle, um, what was it called Baja? I think it was Not called Baja. Dune. Dune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it had like a 0. 0.6 inch lift. Yeah. Like, can you imagine if that actually had 60 extra horsepower and three extra inches of lift? All right. I would have, I would have walked to the fucking dealer down here in Stanford and I would have given them a check. <laughs> I'm going shock shock value on this one, okay? Because mm-hmm. I did not prep you for this at all. I so hope that's a render. It is a render. So this is this is one of uh, his uh, wb dot artist twenty on Instagram. I I love following his stuff. He does a great job with the renders. He was the remember the Ram TRX Suburban. Uh, recently oh, that i showed you yeah, he did yeah. that render so he did a mustang raptor which after looking at the porsche and the lamborghini why not <laughs> why not have one of these mm-hmm. and they're so much fun to look at oh, they'd be hilarious friend. it's like they look like rally uh rally fighters the local motors rally fighters they do look bit. like rally fighters yeah yeah hi mike levine yeah. uh would you like this uh ip yeah I mean, you would <laughs> yeah exactly um, I mean, it's available. Do you, do you remember probably six ish years ago, somebody, and I don't want to say like ralified, but like put like 30 inch tires on a Hellcat? Ooh, I don't remember that one. Oh boy. I'll see what Please I can do. Please hold. Okay, rally. Uh, would it oh, be, I found it. Is it blue, like from Turner or Bilstein? Uh, search Rachel Scheuer, S H O Y E R. And I only found this because I searched and my own universe article came up from 2017. Um, it was the quote unquote Mad Max car of the uh, of the time. Um, speaking of. Oh Mad gosh. Max. Um, if if anybody listening has not seen Fury Road, stop listening to us and go watch Fury Road at least thirty times before you come back to listening to us. Because Fury Road is probably the, probably the best movie made in my lifetime. Just saying. Spell Shoyer again. S H O S H R. You know what? This is easier if I just send you the link in the chat. Because it's not working right now. And my Google search is like, did you mean? No, I didn't. I meant what I right. My The message has been sent in the chat, and this will be our last topic of the night as I have things I have to. Oh, I was close, I think. Do, fortunately. it's a forum and is moving incredibly slow (laughs) yeah it's all par so it it, so it's gonna it's glacial it looks like what she has has done is basically just taken uh off-road ko2s on a much smaller wheel and put them on the back Mm -hmm. um and and then been able to give it dominate on the front this is five years ago and five years ago, the Hellcat was only about a year old. 
Yeah. So she figured out what the smallest wheel he could fit around the rear Hellcat brake was and then slapped the KO2, the biggest KO2 that could fit in the wheel well around that and uh, and made, you know, internet. At the time, it was internet magic because it's like, this is before, you know, Lee Keen had decided to Ralify 911s, you know, <laughs> it's so long ago the image is only 500 pixels. <laughs> yeah, it is, I, it is really small. <laughs> that, is a, that is a small picture, that is a tiny little picture. But yeah, imagine a, a very muddy challenger. Her in general, well, and I think her, I think her initial wrap is like a like a faux. A faux like Patina. rust, yeah. yeah. It's 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 before patina was cool. It was like, and before like the the pseudo bloody thing was funny for like Halloween, yeah. And Walking Dead, um, you know this this was like pretty innovative, in all fairness. So, yeah, I like it. I'm reading this all whole article. She ran a, an eleven six. At 5,000 feet. It's pretty good. Stick car, too. Yeah, oh, I finally, I finally found sorry one. Sorry for has, my yawns. I am. I, I finally am. found one that has the a little more. Yeah. My yawns are. You can indicative. definitely see the wheel diameter difference on oh, this one. <laughs> man. Yeah, I mean, this is very, it's lot. very Mad Max, which I mean, yeah. shit. Well, he's just saying that because it's got louvers on the rear window. Yeah, but it's also got it's got mud, it's got the big tire out back. It the thing is like the the small wheel big tire in the rear and big wheel small tire up front. The Mad Max part of that is like the fact the mentality of I will find what I have available to me yep. and make it work kind of thing, you know? Just like regular New Zealand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And again, right. anybody that has not seen Fury Road, it's a good watch. one. I've rewatched it a number of times. It, man, it is my fucking favorite. It's so. good. One. I like it. Well, sweet. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. Crucial. Uh, yeah. You can rate and review the show wherever you listen to it. Uh, you can like and subscribe on YouTube. You can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. Ross is no, not like the one from Friends. And I'm at Overlanding Dad, and that's it. That's our show. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks.